Tony's uh, getting ready for the ball game, so you just get me today. I know it's a disappointment. No, no, never, never. But I was told that there was both you guys were going to be on. So. I know. I, I I'm know. not disappointed, though. I'm not disappointed. I appreciate that. All right, I, I dug up some stuff for you to start the conversation right here. You ready? Oh, yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Uh, our friends at ESPN, and this is ridiculous already because they already have a top 25 poll out for next season, so I know you think that's crazy. But they have Stanford ranked in that top 25. And in a story that was published today on the ESPN website, they say that Stanford's most important game this year is November the 3rd at Washington. Now, we know that the Aztecs are opening the season against Stanford. That's why I bring that up. But even furthermore, I want to read this to you because I want I'm giving you a little blackboard material, not that you would need it. But it says the winner of the Stanford Washington game. Uh, has played in the Pac-12 championship the past three years. By November the 3rd, the Cardinal will already have played USC, Oregon, Notre Dame, and Utah. Getting through all of that will be tough enough. Now, you notice there was an omission of a team there that I didn't hear them mention in that little note. See, they're already going to have played USC, Oregon, Notre Dame, and Utah. Didn't see a mention that they were going to have to play San Diego State. So I think... They they better not forget about that because otherwise you guys will remind them real quick like you did last year. Well, I promise you, their coaches and their players won't forget about that. And fair but enough. But that's just you know that's that that's the Power Five uh, propaganda because you know they just assume if we beat them, it ain't gonna make any difference later on in the season because people will forget about it. And then they 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 might be right about that. You know they they might just. Uh, Come into our game, use us as an exhibition game, and if we win, then it's no big deal because they got the Pac-12 schedule coming up, you know? Well, I, I like the way we're kicking things off this year with the Aztecs going into Stanford. I know you guys will be ready. I know you'll be pumped up for the game. How are things going in the off season? Kind of give me a, a – catch me up a little bit, a little, uh, a little overall feel. Well, so far so good. I mean, we have all our veteran players are here going to summer school, and that means they're working out five days a week couple days they run the other days they lift so things are going good that way our new our new guys our new transfers as well as our new freshmen will come into the second session of summer school which starts after july the fourth and so we'll have our whole team here then and they'll work out for about four weeks before we start practice we start practice on august the second and then we have a total of 25 practices before that first game is it fair to say that over the last five or six years, Coach Coach Rocky Long is with us here on 97.3 The Fan, that you're getting a look and a chance to get better, younger players coming into the program? Well, I, I think that our coaches have done a great job over the last five or six years evaluating talent and, and getting players in our program that develop into outstanding football players. So I, I, I don't think we've changed our recruiting one one bit uh we did last year we got a lot better uh response for the local guys we we signed 11 san diego county guys and so we got a better response from the local guys but but i think our coaches do such a great job of evaluating i don't necessarily think we're we're getting better players i think we're getting the same kind of players uh now some of them might have a little bit bigger name in the recruiting world but uh i think we're getting the same kind of players now it's up to us to develop them and you got some new coaches now. Uh, I, I, in a lot of ways, I almost think that you kind of like the fact now that teams are starting to raid San Diego State's coaching staff a little bit. <laughs> you, you're certainly going to miss your guys. Uh, they've done a terrific job for you. But this is obviously comes along with success, is that people are going to start checking San Diego State's assistants out and uh, give you a chance to bring some other people in. Well, I mean, that's a double-edged sword, right? Yeah. I mean, you feel you feel good for the guys that left because they got a little bit more responsibility and they're getting paid a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Actually, they're getting paid quite a bit more. <laughs> and so, so you don't blame them leaving for those kind of reasons. Uh, and, and it, you know, it, it's because of the success that this program has had, and the coaches have a lot to do with that, obviously. But it does give you an, a chance to get some good coaches in there that have a little bit different ideas and a new enthusiasm and – and all that kind of thing, and and I, we think we got some really good coaches, so we think that it'll just improve our program. I uh, continue to see it rise. Rocky Long, the head coach of San Diego State Aztec football, joining us here on ninety seven three, the fan. Uh, coach, uh, I've seen a lot of stories uh, about uh, the NCAA easing rules a little bit on transferring. 
Um, I, I, I know the SEC had some big deal about transferring within the conference. Can you clear any of this up, and does it have any effect on San Diego State in terms of getting players, or is it still the same old thing where you, where no, wherever you transfer, you're always going to have to sit out a year? Well, every league is making their own choice on that right now. Okay. I mean, the, the NCAA is uh, making you sit a year if uh, you leave another school and you haven't graduated and all that stuff. That's the NCAA. But some leagues have had in the past, SEC included, that, that if you transferred within conference, there was a chance you would have to sit two years, that you could not get eligible. And then if you were a graduate, you would still have to sit a year. That's still the way the Mountain West Conference is. Almost every conference is easing that now. So almost in every conference now, if you have graduated, you can transfer within the in your conference and be immediately eligible. Okay. And a lot of that's changing, and that's what the SEC did. I assume, and I guess, because I think it's going to happen, that every the NCAA is going to change its rule, that everybody's going to be able to transfer once without any penalty. Are we opening up a can of worms, or is this a good idea? Uh, I don't know yet. Uh, every, other, <laughs> every other sport other than football and basketball can do that now. So uh-huh. they've been doing that for a long time, so I think we'll, we'll just learn how to live with it. Rocky Long is with us, the Aztecs head coach. Uh, obviously, I can't get through a conversation without asking you, uh, if you've talked with Rashad Penny and uh, how things are going from your perspective. The last time we talked to you, I think, was the day he came in and said goodbye. And uh, you told us that uh, you thought, he thought, he was going to go in the first round. And the very next day, you guys were proven absolutely correct because he went right in the first round. So that was a great feeling, a great moment for the Aztec program. Uh, where are things with Rashad? Or have you have any conversation with him recently? Well, after he got drafted and he went up there for the press conference and everything, he came back here and came by and talked a little bit, and obviously he was very, very excited. And then then we heard from him, Coach Horton heard from him when he signed his contract, and and we're very happy that he's going to make all that kind of money. But we haven't seen him uh, Hmm. since they've been doing, I think they're called OTAs and the mini camps. We haven't seen him since those have started. Now, we're getting reports from up there that he's doing doing really well, that – they're happy with him. He's done some things there better than they anticipated, like catching the ball out of the backfield. So he's getting great reviews, but we haven't actually seen him in person. How about your running back situation? A lot of people don't think you can come up with another one, man. You've had I mean, Danelle Pumphrey and now Rashad Penny and now uh, next up. Uh, I mean, I, I thought saw some good things last year from uh, was Jamal, right? Juwan, Juwan, Juwan yeah, I saw some great things from Juwan. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I, does he get the job, or does he have to earn this thing and uh, for an everyday carry type of situation? No, Jeff Horton's offense coordinator and running back coach, and that's the way he works it. And Juwan is our starting running back. Uh, in fact, we treated him like a starter in spring practice. He didn't do any of the scrimmage, and we didn't hit him during the scrimmages. And then we have uh, three guys that are in our program at running back. we got two running backs coming in with the freshman class. Now those guys will battle it out to see who's the backup's going to be. Uh, we have great confidence in Juwan. We think he'll have a great year. Uh, obviously he has a lot to live up to. And, um, you know, I'm glad it's not me because I'd be a little nervous. <laughs> it's, it's a nice tree to get to follow, but you're right. You're going to have to you're going to have to perform. Obviously, the offensive line, I think last year was almost a revelation to a certain extent. Um, you guys did such a great job with that group. I mean, it was young. I know you were concerned about it. But by season's end, you guys were knocking people off the ball. And now everyone's coming back, right? Yeah, I, I think last year everybody heard, and I was I was nervous with our young offensive line, and and I think they struggled at times early in the season, but by the end of the season they played like a veteran group, and every one of them's back, and, and all but one guy are underclassmen, so four of the five are going to be back again next year. So I at, at one time I thought it was the weakness of our program last year, now I think it's the strength of our offense right now, and that and that will help Juwan look better too. Uh, it's going to be fabulous. I can't wait. Uh, and Christian Chapman goes into his senior season. Are are you going to give him a little bit more uh, freedom, uh, a little bit more uh, – let him handle the keys to the car a little bit more, as it, as it were? Well, he's he's been doing that. He did that last year, too. Now, uh, you know, we have some young receivers in our program. We lost two seniors that played a lot last year. Uh, but the young receivers in our program, 
ought to be much better this year than they were last year. And and what Christian does has a lot to do with how successful we're running the ball and how good the wide receivers are in getting open. But if he wins one game as a starting quarterback this year, he'll be the all-time uh, winner as a starting quarterback in San Diego State history. So obviously he's done a great job. We expect him to continue to do that. I expect him to break that record on August the 31st. You tell him I said so. Okay, that would be wonderful. <laughs> right, because that's the date of the Stanford game. Coach, great spending time with you, as always. I mean, we used to do our coaches show together, so I, I feel like I can always talk to you for a long time, but you got other things to do, I know. Appreciate you stopping by, saying hello, and uh, we'll catch up with you soon. Well, I miss those times, but I appreciate you having me on. Thanks a lot. You betcha, sir. Rocky Long, the head coach of the San Diego State Aztecs football team there. They open August 31st. August 31st? Whatever happened to Sep- coming up? Whatever happened to September football? You play in Started September. next week. Yeah, no kidding. August 31st, but the opening game is at Stanford. Uh, it's going to be nationally televised. It's going to be a 6 o'clock Friday night game. Bryce Love. Bryce Love is already the Heisman favorite. Did you see that? I the did see that. The story came out the other day that you know they have to put odds out on everything now. And but- you know Rashad, Rashad Penny blew him out of the water last year in their their head-to-head meet. Well, that might be overstating it a little. You think I, so? Yeah. I, I saw the I was on the sidelines for the game. Uh, Rashad Penny was every bit as good as Bryce Love.